Gangster films are the westerns of modern times. The outlaw gives America a mythology all its own. You, you rip and you steal and you murder to get what you want. There's a lot of businessmen that make money illegally too, right, on Wall Street. Uh, but the thing is they don't go out and do it with a gun or they don't do it with a baseball bat. From D.W. Griffith to The Sopranos, we closely follow the rise and fall of the mob. I was blessed, <laughs> the lack of a better word, uh, with, a, with a temper. This is kind of a sometimes a touchy subject with me, because everybody thinks I'm a gangster to start with. Hollywood has always found fascination with the gangster, and in turn, the gangster finds his persona in Hollywood. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. It's an appealing subject. They'll survive forever. No, 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 they're still alive. No, fucking piece of shit. Don't die. Don't die. If the gangster had never existed, Hollywood would have invented him. Viewed through the camera lens darkly, each continues to refocus the other. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. The fantasy of gangland has always exerted a pull upon the imagination of Hollywood. The criminal lifestyle has also exerted a pull on mob-struck youths. Criminals are inherently interesting. Movies make them dynamic. Whether we are attracted to them or repelled by them, we can't stop watching. But that's good, I'll wag it good and ready. That friendship stuff don't mean a thing to me. This guy's got enough on us to... You won't talk. He better not. Gangland films play to packed houses. Time and again, a proven box office draw. It's a concept that they believe that the gangster has the ultimate power. You have the power to stand up and take the blows. The mythology starts here. New York City at the turn of the 20th century. Italian, Jewish, and Irish immigrants flow into New York City's Lower East Side. The Lower East Side becomes the arena for the hopes, dreams, and fears that America holds for the immigrant. They love being here. All those people who were extremely discarded, they saw America, it was reverence, and they were willing to be the bricklayers and build the subway. But some found a quicker way, an alternate economy. The American dream turned inside out, where the gangster not only survives, but thrives. Pure American values become completely distorted. People always want to get away with murder. That's why they like gangsters. The American habit. Crime becomes a way of life. Gangster films do reflect at least a part of American life. The first waves of immigration assimilated and became essentially the Anglo-Saxon WASP establishment. The later waves of the Irish, the Italian, the Jewish, all encountered prejudice 
and you find that in the mobs, they were fighting their way up, sometimes outside the system. Gangsters are seen as victims of a depressed environment, kids growing up on the street and forming alliances. They did it because they were immigrants and they wanted their children to have better lives than they did. The Jews, the Italians, the Irish, you know, who really didn't have the opportunity to get a good job. They worked at docks, they worked this and that, and then they got into these other things. They were willing to take five years or ten years for some crime that they made enough money to get their kids out of the streets and into colleges. Immigrants who came here, particularly immigrants from Europe, uh, had opportunities to survive without engaging in criminal activity. So I don't think that uh, anyone had no choice but to join the Mafia. Obviously, by becoming a gangster, you had an opportunity to make a lot of money, illegitimately. Directed by D.W. Griffith in 1912 and featuring real gangster locations and extras, The Musketeers of Pig Alley was an effective combination of social melodrama and cinema verite. In the 1915 film, Regeneration, director Raoul Walsh creates a portrait of one man's inevitable fall into life as a street hoodlum. This beautiful and moving film draws emotional resonance from the soulful performance of Rockcliffe Fellows, whose offhand intensity prefigures the young Marlon Brando. A common theme in gangland films, the hero longs for a life outside of the ghetto. But a gangster can never escape the street. Silent cinema clearly reflects its time, unmasking the evils of an era. Lon Chaney's brilliantly modulated work in the 1920 film, The Penalty, expands the possibilities of the genre. Deranged, deformed, and death-dealing, Chaney still captures our sympathy while igniting our fear. The public did look up to, and in a weird way, admire the gangsters. The gangsters had beaten the system. The system, which was capitalism in its purest form. Taking full advantage of what the government won't allow, stories of gangland crime seize the headlines. In 1920, the government passes the 18th Amendment, prohibiting the sale of alcoholic beverages. Prohibition is the best thing to ever happen to the mob. They weren't doing anything except selling booze to people, and they were going against the government. That's, that's, you know, that makes you a good guy already. And the public wanted the services of all this booze, and so everybody was happy. The gangsters were happy, the public was happy, the government were the only ones that were unhappy because they weren't getting the revenue. It was prohibition that really fueled both gangsterism in a big way, not just in pockets of certain cities, but across the country because of the running of illegal liquor. And that, of course, fueled story writers. Crawl back and tell them we don't want you in with us. Our fight's got nothing to do with liquor and prostitution and dope. I think you better get used to the idea, pal. This country is still growing up. Certain diseases it's better to have when you're still young. You boys ain't a mild case of the measles. You're the plague. And bastards like him are immune. That's the difference between us and 